390, love lifted me. Page 390, stand me as we sing. desire that you'd be honored and glorified today. We pray your continued blessing on our <coughs> desire to worship you. And Lord, we pray you bless your choir as they sing for us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs>
just a few things for you here this morning before we receive our offering today. Remember that tonight, uh, after the service, we'll have a couple's uh, wedding shower for Jonathan and Christian. They'll be back in the fellowship hall uh, this evening. And then tomorrow is the Women of Wisdom meeting that's hosted by Marie Roach at their home. They'll be at 1 o'clock. If uh, you'd like to participate in that and are, have some questions about it, you can see Marie about that. She should be happy to answer any of your questions there. And then remember that this week is uh, one of those weeks here in November where we're moving our midweek service. So we won't have a service Wednesday night. It's going to be on Thursday this week, and that is going to be in conjunction with our school's uh, veterans program. It'll be a wonderful evening. You'll want to be here. It's at 7 o'clock like normal, seven normal time, but that'll be on Thursday night. So no Wednesday night service this week. It's moved to Thursday evening you want to be here for it and please pray that the Lord would bless the meeting we usually have a good number of guests here that night we'll honor any veteran or current military personnel that are that are with us so if you are one of those please be here and please invite it's a great opportunity use it as a tool or an opportunity to invite perhaps some friends or co-workers that you know you may not be as easy to get them here for a Sunday morning for example but you might be able to get them get them to join you as a guest for a special patriotic program. Our students always do a wonderful job uh, in, uh, with the program. It'll, it'll, it's always a moving uh, program. You'll, you'll enjoy that. We are grateful for our staff that help put that together here at BDS. So we'll be here Thursday night, 7 o'clock. Don't, don't forget about that, all right? My dad will come and we'll receive our offering this morning. Always a blessing, always a very patriotic service, which. Uh, I think is essential to a good country, and uh, I'm thankful to be an American, and it, it really uh, kind of brings you back to where uh, where we ought to be as far as uh, patriotism. So if you can be here, I'd encourage you to be here. It's always a blessing. Let's have our ushers come, and we'll honor the Lord this morning with our tithes and offerings. Everybody's uh, endured this time change pretty well, as, as I can see. It's the next, it's the other side. I, I wish they'd just leave it the same, but, you know. Yes. Uh, but, uh, glad that uh, we can endure through it. Isn't the weather beautiful? Yeah. Wow, it's just, just a blessing. Uh, Pastor Brent, do you thank the Lord for the offering this morning? Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for bringing us here to church today, good Lord. We pray that you do bless your word as it's preached, help us apply the truth. Lord, you have that you do bless the offering today, and bless the giver as well. Help us to use your
ladies, we're going to Acts chapter 6, and in your Bible this morning, Acts chapter 6. Great music per usual. Amen. Our part special was something wonderful as well, wasn't it? Praise the Lord for that. And your part was great too. I do hope you don't have any leg cramps uh, before the. That's up and down. There you go. That was him, Brother Grant. It wasn't me. All right. By the way, he had a good one the other night. You weren't here to hear it. It was good. It was. That's, I said, a lot. It's a shame Brother Grant wasn't here to hear that one. That was good. So, one in a row. One in a row. Yeah. Okay, let's do something. Something important here. All right, Acts chapter 6. If you, if you would, please stand. And we'll, if you're able and willing, out of respect and honor for the scriptures, I'm sure thankful to be place where we have the inerrant word of God and trust it. Acts chapter 6, verse number 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Pacorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. I want to talk to you this morning about some good problems. The early church was experiencing some good problems here, and I hope we'll see some truths that might help us deal with, with some problems in our life. Not all problems are bad. Some of them are good. Let's seek the Lord about this. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for our time together. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of preaching, and I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of serving you in this place. And Lord, I pray you'd help us, each one, to see that we have, as your children, we have a responsibility and a role to fulfill. We have an opportunity to serve you. And Lord, I pray that we would seek you that we would be faithful to you in that area of service. We thank you for some, some examples here, some principles that we see in this text that would, should be a help and a challenge to us uh, in, in this area of serving you more faithfully and uh, collectively together as a church family. As always, Lord, we pray that if there be any among us or any who joined us online today that don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, they never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, Receive Christ by faith. Lord, I pray today they would be saved. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his worthy sake. Amen. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. These next two chapters in our study here in our series through the book of Acts are focused on uh, Stephen, the first martyr of the early church. He was a faithful servant of the Lord and faithful to serve in the Lord's work as the Lord led him. But we, before we get to his life and ministry, we, we kind of were introduced to Stephen and what led to him being, being appointed a, a deacon in the early church. And in that, we see that there are some problems the early church is experiencing. And I would call them good problems. What are they? Well, the accusation or the criticism that was launched at the, the disciples here was from some people who were or felt that they were being ignored. The early church was experiencing great growth. Some estimate it to be between 25 and 30,000 people at this stage, at this time, that we're reading about here in Acts chapter 6. Uh, they, were, they were experiencing great growth, and that, hap that, that, that growth was happening so quickly that some felt that they were being uh, ignored, and we might say some details were falling through the cracks. There was 
more responsibility than there were those who were taking responsibility for the responsibilities. I need to run that by you one more time. We had an extra hour of sleep, so maybe you caught it the first time. But there, there was more responsibility than there were those responsible for those responsibilities. So things were falling through through the cracks. Uh, this this large, rapid growth as well can 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 many times lead to apathy. Right? Well, there's a lot of people going to be here, so I don't have to do anything this week. Now, when uh, attendance was up uh, at church the last few Sundays, so no sense in me worrying about witnessing anybody. Uh, my class is doing great, so I can just kind of coast. <laughs> Our home's doing all right, so we can coast. You know, we've got to be careful that apathy doesn't set in. Right. Success can be a, de a great uh, detriment to us. Someone described uh, resting in success uh, this way. A last, a success is a last year's nest from which the birds have flown. We've, we've always got to be tending to the work and the ministry that God has, has called us to. We should never settle for where we are. We should be content with such things as we have, but we as God's people need to understand we should always be pressing on for God. We need to be always advancing for the cause of Christ. No one ever arrives where they should be in this life. We all battle our, our enemies, the world, the flesh, and the devil. But we need to be advancing. We need to be seeking to advance for the cause of Christ. So there were problems here. They were enjoying great success. But what were the problems? Well, the problem specifics were that the Grecian, we understand that to be the Greek-speaking Jews, were frustrated with the Hebrews, which would have been the Aramaic-speaking Jews, because the Grecian Jews thought that their widows were being neglected. What we see from this is there's always more to be done. I mean, the church was exploding with good growth. Uh, things were advancing. We've just studied in the last chapter about the persecution they were facing because of the growth was going on so much. The, the world was accusing them. The false religious people were accusing them of, of filling Jerusalem with their doctrine. Uh, they, they're being, the, the accusations being launched at them are good. The church is just growing. It's, it's an amazing growth. But yet, some people feel like they're, they're being left, left out. You know, there's always, there are always more things to be done in the work of the Lord. There's always another visit to make. There's always another contact to make, another phone call. There's, there's always something around the church that needs tending to. Uh, there's you know, property and uh, maintenance and building maintenance and Things need dusted and cleaned and so on and so forth. And not that anybody's not doing their job here, but all those things require people to do them. They don't just get done. You know, you can see in a hurry in, in a house or in a building or in a church where it becomes an assumption somebody else is going to take care of it. It doesn't take long for the place to look like a mess, does it? Right. There's always, there are always things that need to be done. And in the ministry for Christ, in a local church ministry, there are always, always things that need to be addressed and need to be need to be taken care of. So the, the problem specifics were that, that a certain group of the church felt like that their their special needs people weren't being taken care of. So we see those problems. And then we see some problem solving. I want to talk first of all about, about this. This is so key and so important. I, I want us to note the attitude. You know, most problems can be easily solved or easily resolved if people come with the right attitude. Right. If people come with stubbornness, it's, 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 it's going to be a difficult thing to resolve the problem. Uh, we need to have a right, a right spirit about us, a right attitude. In Romans chapter 12, the Bible says this, verses 10 and 11, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. And then the text, so that's talking about our attitude, kindly affection one toward another, and honor, preferring one another. The next verse, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. You see, the setup for the service is a right attitude in the service. So attitude matters. If we're going to solve the problem, we've got to come with an attitude or a heart that is saying, how can I be helpful to this and not harmful? If we're staunch about, i got to have my way, and not seeking the Lord or not having a right heart attitude toward, Lord, what wilt thou have us to do? 
And it's going to be awful difficult to convince you or to convince me of the truth. We get set in our ways. Uh, that's bad. It's a bad position to be. Notice, and turn with me, you can keep a place here in Acts if you would. Turn with me back to Philippians chapter 2. Just go ahead and go toward Revelation in your Bible there. Re uh, Philippians toward Revelation. We're going to the book of Philippians. Slow down, Jim. All right. Philippians chapter 2. And notice with me, if you would, beginning with verse 1. Philippians chapter 2. We're, seeing, we're talking about problem solving. We're, we're, th we're thinking first, first and foremost about the attitude or the spirit in dealing with, with, uh, with the problem. Notice what it says in Philippians 2 verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. That's a rather bold statement, isn't it? Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't be trying to serve the Lord because I'm frustrated that others won't do it. And I shouldn't be trying to serve the Lord so that others will notice how great I am in serving the Lord. But nothing need be done through strife or vainglory. You say, well, preacher, if I applied that, I wouldn't do anything for God. Well, you've got a poor spirit. You've got backwards. So straighten out your attitude and get busy for God. Amen. Move on. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Our attitude, our attitude matters. I would summarize... Uh, this this some point this way. Attitude isn't everything, but without a right attitude, nothing seems to work right. It's true in my life personally. It's true in our homes. And it's certainly true at work. It's true in the church. Right. Attitude is everything. But without a right attitude, nothing seems to work right. Attitude matters. Attitude matters. So we see the problem problem solving. First of all, we address the attitude. Secondly, we, we, we note or, or what is addressed here is the, the assignment. Back in our text, what did, they tell, what did they tell them to do? Verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, Acts 6 and verse 3, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we, we may appoint over this, this business. So they gave an assignment. They said, first of all, you need to nominate some helpers. But then they also said you need to nominate some qualified helpers. Church ministry should not be for the leftovers. It shouldn't be our leftovers, nor should it be, well, you know, you can't do anything in society, so go work for the church. And no. No. Uh, the, the leftovers, the church ministry should not be for the leftovers. They, they said you need to nominate some people to help with this. And by the way, here's some qualifications that these nominees need to, need to have in order to help with this with this problem. So the assignment was nominate some helpers and nominate only qualified helpers. The problem the early church faced is, is not unlike many of our troubles today. There was more work to be done, and each and every one of God's children should be busy about the master's business. Every child of God should be serving the Lord. Amen. Every child of God should be serving the Lord. There's much to do in the, in the Lord's work. All of us can be busy about the master's business. Every one of us, every child of God should be serving the Lord, and everyone should be serving one another without expecting to be served. That's where it gets tough. I'm willing to chip in. I'll do my part as long as someone's chipping in and making sure they're doing their part for me. We're, we need to be serving the Lord and serving in the Lord's work doing our part, fulfilling our part, without an expectation that people are going to serve us. Attitude, our attitude matters. So we see the problems. I want us to think secondly here about, about the, the priorities. Every ministry in the church is important. Right. We don't understand that. I was helping someone get their, their youngster to the nursery this morning. And I'm thankful that we have nursery that helps, and so we don't have the distraction of kids going crazy here in, in the auditorium this morning, so, so it doesn't distract me. Because you know what happens when I get distracted? I go back to the last place I remember and start over, and usually the introduction's a good place. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So we're helpful for those who serve in the ministry, in the, in the nursery ministry. We've got others serving in the junior church today. They're taking care of ministering to at, a, at our, our young people's uh, age level. Uh, that ministry, we have people serving bus ministry. It's all kinds of opportunities for ministry. I'm thankful for those who serve in the ministry. We're going to have people that are going to serve tonight. We're going to have this, wedding, this couple's uh, shower, and I think uh, brownie Sundays are on the menu. We're grateful. We're going to have people who are going to, going to do, do these things. We have people that cook breakfast for about 40 of us fellows that were here yesterday for the, the men's prayer breakfast. Great time. We enjoyed, enjoyed uh, breakfast yesterday. People, these things require people to do them. Right? Not any one of us could do them all. But we're thankful for those who serve in, in ministry. Every ministry in the church is important. Aren't we thankful for our choir ministry? Yeah. Right. You know, a choir's not much when only three show up. You know, a choir was here nine-ish this morning. They'll be here about an hour before the service tonight. Preparation. These, these things require effort and work and, and service. Every ministry in the church is important. I want us to think about the circumstance of what we read this morning. Right? Were, were you paying attention? All right? So these, these, this group was frustrated that their widows, from their perspective, were being neglected in the, in the daily administration. Uh, let me put it in, in terms like I think that will help us understand. So, so uh, their widows were not being fed as they should. The food pantry was not being governed appropriately. Can you imagine if we had Peter and John in our service today and someone raised their hand and said, hey, I got a question. When's Peter going to serve me my brownie Sunday? I want to make sure the ice cream's not melted too much and I want to just the right amount of syrup make sure Peter does it right. We're frustrated because we're not being fed the way we want to be fed. You say, preacher, you're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating much. And we understand the widows were taken, this was a different time, and we know that the widows were taken care of through the church because of their economic system, so on and so forth. I'm not, not belittling that the importance or significance of the widows being cared for. But I, I just want us to take a step back here and think about this for a moment. Would, would any of us dare say to the Apostle John, uh, when are you going to feed me my lunch? That's exactly what was going on here. The 12 disciples say, hey, our widows are being ignored. You need to tend to this. And what did the disciples say? Look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, that we may give point over this business. We're going to give ourselves continually to the ministry God has called us to do. I paraphrase, but that's exactly what they said. Not to minimize the responsibility that was going to be given to these seven men. It was important. Because every ministry in the church is important. Right. We need to understand that no matter what our calling or what ministry it is that God has called us to, that each and every one of them are, are important. Now sometimes it is amazing what, what are piled on preachers' uh, responsibility plates. And we're all, every one of us on pastoral staffing, we're willing to help however we can. Let's make sure we understand what is and isn't the preacher's responsibility. Right? That makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Are you guys with me? Yeah. All right. Good deal. All right. So what was the goal here? What was the objective? We see a principle here. They were to delegate in order to duplicate. It's interesting to me that they appoint these men over this business. And most of us know what goes on here in the next few chapters. We're talking about Steve who's going to be stoned for preaching. Obviously, he advanced from uh, serving tables in a hurry. The Lord, the Lord gave him more, more responsibility. Delegate in order to duplicate. What is a deacon? Well, the word serve and administration in our text are from the Greek word deaconos. And that word means an attendant, or we might illustrate it as a, a waiter. A deacon, a minister, a servant. So, a deacon. We duplicate or we delegate in order to duplicate. So the first responsibility of these seven men who had to be of good report and filled with the Holy Ghost was to oversee the church food pantry. Interesting, isn't it? Now I know some of you, I know how some of us think. 
It's great. We're having a fellowship after church tonight. I want to look for Dave and Steve and Grant to serve me my brownie Sunday. That's what we're going to do, right? That's how some, some of us, you say, preacher, I wasn't thinking that at all. Well, I'm, now you, you got a, an unfortunate view in the mind of your preacher. All right. So they, 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 were, they were there to serve. So we see, we see the, the, the delegation in order to duplicate so that the ministry could continue to go forward without accusation or without difficulty. We can continue the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the designation, the second thing I want us to consider here about, about this problem being solved, the priorities here, is that the, the designation of a deacon. Deacons are not a political office. I hope that you, if you're of voting age, that you're registered to vote as a believer and you'll participate. If you've not already voted, you'll participate in our national election, our state, state and local elections uh, tomorrow. Or Tuesday, I'm sorry. If you don't go vote tomorrow, that might be a problem. All right. On Tuesday, we have the opportunity to, to vote. All right. Those are political offices. People are running for those positions. Right. Deacons are not political offices in the church. Right. They're not political offices. They're appointed. In our church order and structure, uh, the deacons are recommended by the pastor and they're voted on, voted on or voted into that office by the congregation. We see, we, so we see the designation of a deacon. It's not a political office. It's an appointment. We see also their qualities. You notice two things about their qualities. One, they, they need to have a good reputation. They need to be of honest report. And they need to have a godly reputation. Full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Right, what is that talking about? Full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Their life revolved around the faith. Their, their life revolved around the risen Savior. Their life revolved around the gospel because Christ is life and full of the Holy Ghost. They were, they were filled with the Spirit of God so that the Spirit of God, God himself, was controlling their life. There was evidence that God was in charge of their life, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost. Their, their qualities. Not only do we see their qualities, but again, if you'll keep your place here in Acts and go, or, and go with me to 1 Timothy chapter 3, we see a listing of qualifications for a deacon. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, we note uh, beginning there in verse 8. The qualifications of a deacon. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be great. That word means uh, serious or sober-minded, someone who would be worthy of, of respect, uh, not double-tongued. So they're honest, not given to much wine. Nor, uh, by the way, that that doesn't mean they only drink a little. It, uh, we understand the, the Bible clearly teaches us that wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Right. right. Stay away from wine. So what, what, is, what is the Bible talking about here? Well, in, in Bible days, that would have wine would have included medicine. Would have been used for that purpose, not for partying, but for physical aid. And uh, they would use uh, those wine in the Bible would be used to drink their water so that it would be, uh, you'd be able to drink it safely. And so don't read more into that than, than what is there, right? So not given to, to, to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. So they're not a schemer. They're, they're uh, blameless. Holding the mystery, verse 9, holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. So there should be a novice. There should be some maturity about them. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave. Again, that's a serious or sober-minded. Doesn't mean we can't have fun, but it means we understand when it's time to have fun and when it's time to be serious. Uh, where was I? Verse, verse 11. Be grave, not slander, sober, uh, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, so they shouldn't be divorced. There's a qualification. Ruling their children and their house as well. They should lead their, their homes well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well, purchased themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So we see their qualities, a good, repu a good reputation, a godly reputation. And then we see their qualifications. They're biblically laid out. It's clear, clear here. By the way, this list is very similar. We might call it a list. These qualifications are very similar to that of someone who would be a preacher. 
So you, you don't have to be a deacon to serve the Lord. That's the point. I'm, let me get to the point I'm trying to make here. You don't have to be a deacon to serve the Lord. Everybody can be serving the Lord. But there are Bible qualifications for a man to serve in the office of a deacon. To be appointed to that office and serve as a deacon. Deacons are appointed for what purpose? To come alongside the pastor in serving the church. For the purpose of advancing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not for gaining myself a position. Right. Did you hear that? The purpose is to come alongside and, and help advance the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. To advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that it would go, it would go forward for him to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. This 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 prospering then that develops so we have this problem, we see the priorities here's how we're going to address this problem and then we see the prospering that took, took place the church continued to grow as I mentioned earlier, the church was about 25 or 30,000 people at this time now you can do some math if you want to but I just want you to think about if there are 12 apostles in leadership here and they've appointed 7 more, that's 19 that's over 1,000 people per man, am I, am I right? That's a lot of responsibility. A lot of responsibility. So it wasn't that they were the only ones serving in the church. But we see some things here that are of, the, of God, of the Holy Spirit. Go back to our text there to Acts chapter 6. I want us to note some things about this prospering church. First of all, notice in verse 5 that the church was unified. The whole multitude. The whole multitude. The saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose, and they list these seven men that they chose. We can, let me make this statement first. I am confident, I think you would agree with me, there were more than seven that would have been qualified for the office. Of the 25 to 30,000, there would have been more than seven that were qualified for the position. Are you with me? But uh, the, 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 the early church chose out seven nominees, and the apostles went to, they, no doubt, they prayed about it. You can see from the, that was their mode of operation. They would seek the Lord about it. They agreed, and they laid hands on them, saying, we agree. We agree. These seven should be deacons in the church and set over this responsibility, come alongside and aid in the ministry here at uh, First Baptist Church of Jerusalem. Was the Bethel Baptist Church of Jerusalem? <laughs> the local church in Jerusalem. You can say amen to that. We know that. All right. It came alongside to help. There would have been more that have been qualified than that, but these were given this assignment, this appointment for this responsibility. But here, here's the thing I want us to see. The, the, the saying pleased the whole multitude. They came in agreement and they laid hands on them, and yes, we're for this. This, this, this is what I want you to see. We can give our input. And we desire input. Uh, we have de uh, deacons meetings from time to time, and deacons and our pastoral staff are there, and, and uh, we're hashing things out, trying to discern the Lord's will about things, and I'll seek the input of, of everybody in the room, right? But we understand something. Once a decision is made, this is what we're going to do. We're on the same page, right? Do you think that we're probably, perhaps, maybe just... Anywhere in mind, some other than these seven that might have been nominated, so and so thought. Well, I think I think I think brother so and so would be far better than some of these other guys. I mean, that one's a proselyte from somewhere else. Should we appoint him over this? Right? There would have been others that would no doubt would have been suggested. But once the decision was made, we're together. We're pulling the same direction for the cause of Christ. Yeah. This is not about me, nor is it about you. It's about the Lord. It's about Him. They were unified together for the, the cause of Christ. They were pulling and growing together for the cause of Christ. They were unified, and because they were unified in Christ, there was more multiplication. Yeah. Verse 7, And the word of God increased. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith multiplied multiplied that's more than attitude 
Would you agree? When the Bible says multiplied, that's talking about more than just a little bit being added. I mean, addition is a good thing. Anybody being added to the church is a good thing. But when the church is multiplying, we all know that means more than just adding to the church. I know it's an hour later than normal. Everybody with me here? Some of you might be growling. Just hang with me, right? We understand what's going on here. So they have this problem. They dealt with it from a spiritual attitude. How can we resolve this problem? This is, this is a problem. We need to be on the same page here. Here's, some, here's what we need to do. They all were in unification. Yes, this is what we need to do. These are the nominees. The disciples agree with this. We'll lay our hands on them. Uh, then uh, we're unified together. This is what we're going to do. And the church multiplied. Multiply. <clears throat> this problem began. This is, this is, listen. What caused the problem? <clears throat> growth. Thank you. Is growth a good thing or a bad thing? Good. What if somebody takes your seat? What if you're used to having three chairs empty next to you in your row and all of a sudden there's someone sitting next to you? I like my space, man. <laughs> Is growth a good problem or a bad problem? Good. We know the right answer. Do we, do we believe it in here? A preacher, I'm having a hard time finding a parking spot. A spot. Praise God! <laughs> Park next door. A lot of empty spots there on Sunday morning. Pastor Brent doesn't need all that driveway next door. We'll park in his spot. <laughs> you get here early enough, you can have my spot. I'll park next door. Sometimes we think growth. It's a good problem. The church is it's multiplying. The problem was growth. The problem dealt with yielded more growth. More good problems. More good problems. What for the furtherance of the under the furtherance of the gospel? I want you to see this. Don't miss this. Some tough cases were won. You have any tough cases in your life you're trying to reach for the gospel? Amen. I mean, they're set in their their ways, whether it be anti God or their their wrong religion. Their anti God religion. You have some tough cases in your life. I was talking with a brother this morning about one, and you go, "Whew, yep, yeah, these are tough cases." I want to see them one to Christ. As the church yielded to the Holy Spirit and followed his path under the, the, the authority of the local church and those that got it put in authority there, they yielded that, that the church was unified and there was multiplication and the tough cases were what? You say, where are the tough cases, preacher? Well, look right there again in verse 7. And at the end of the verse, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. You say, well, how are those tough cases? Well, the priests were set in the Sanhedrin way. Right. Were you paying attention in the last chapter? I mean, that was the group that beat the apostles and said, have a great day. Don't say anything else about the Lord. Well, the Sanhedrin was not in favor of what was going on in the early church. Amen and amen. We understand that, right? They were not. They were not in, they were not in agreement with it. They were trying to stop it. For these priests to be obedient to the faith meant they were going to leave their livelihood. In the Jewish system, you had to be born into a family that could be appointed to a priesthood. Right. This was a big deal. I mean, this this wasn't. A, I don't mean to belittle anything here, but this wasn't. A, I've been employed at McDonald's all this time. I'm sick of this. I'm going over to Wendy's. This wasn't just changing changing career. Right. It, it, this what this was. I mean, for some of them, this could have been hazarding their lives. I mean, you do know that the disciples were just beaten to a bloody mess for their faith and witness to the gospel. But these tough cases were one. They saw, what did they see? They saw the witness of Christ Amen. in the twenty-five to 30,000 believers. That's what they saw. They observed the witness of Christ. They, they saw Christ in them. They saw some crazy people going, love left in me. What, what was that about? Are you dancing before the Lord? No, we're not dancing before the Lord. Sorry. No, I'll do that in here. We're back to school. Brother Grant's talking about we can't be in rhythm. Well, we're, that's not our forte, right? We're Baptists, right? I'm glad the choir and the instruments are in the right rhythm, but you all understand what I'm saying. The tough cases were won. The witness of the word through the local church. 
and the word of God increased. Amen. The word of God increased. The work of God then increased. People were added to the family of God. That Amen. increased. The prospering. You know, when our problems are dealt with in a godly manner, when each of us are seeking the Lord's desire, we avail ourselves to enjoy the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Amen. It's a blessing to know that you're in the Lord's will, following Him. Are you busy about the Master's business? Or are you a busybody deteriorating? Well, I'm not, I'm not a busybody. I just don't like the way you, you do things, preacher. Okay, well, then you probably should come talk to me about that and not other people. Amen. Right. Come on. Well, I'm not, I just don't like the way Sister So and so. Well, you know, it's a biblical order to do things with the right spirit. Right? We can deal with problems. Amen. I'm not a know it all. <clears throat> I got plenty to learn. I'm thankful God's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Yeah. I hope all of us recognize. God's still trying to work on each of us. Amen. Let's go forward with the gospel of Christ. Christ died on the cross. The only worthy sacrifice for our sin. He was buried for our sin, our transgression. But thank God he didn't stay in that grave. On that third day, he arose. The gospel is the death, the burial, and praise God, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's advance the cause of Christ. We have problems to deal with. Let's deal with them biblically and rightly. Father, thank you for our time together in your word this morning. Lord, I pray that your word has done its work in each of our hearts and lives. Lord, help us to be seeking you, to seek that position or opportunity of, of service. Lord, not for just a name or a title or a position, but Lord, for the privilege of serving you. Lord, help our church to be growing. Added to, and Lord, if you would be pleased, multiply it. Lord, I pray that if there are any among us today that don't know you as a personal Lord and Savior, that they'd respond in invitation time and allow us to take your word and show them how they can trust Christ as their Savior. They can be obedient to the faith, just like these priests were here in Acts chapter 6. Lord, others today, others of us who know you, we've not had a right spirit about some things in our life. Lord, I pray we confess those things to you even now. Lord, help us to be adding to your work and desiring to be place of service where we can aid and abet the ministry of the gospel under the furtherance of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to go forward for thee. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Let's stand together.